Tomorrow, Friday is Nominations Day for Local Government Elections 2018. Former Chancellor of the Judiciary says charges against former government officials for Pradeville II are unwarranted. Lenin Man crushed to death by log. And in sport, reinforced abandonment of the second ODI between West Indies and South Africa women. These are the major stories we're tracking this evening. I'm Sandy Ramutar with this our Thursday, September 20 edition of News Update. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Tomorrow, Friday, September 21, is nomination day for political parties, groups and individuals contesting the 2018 local government elections slated for November 12. The Opposition People's Progressive Party says it is ready for the elections. Here is that story. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdeo today signaled his party's readiness to contest the upcoming local government elections. Even though there is a pending court matter on the gerrymandering of boundaries, the party said the elections will not be delayed. Tomorrow, once the lists have been submitted, the list of our candidates, we will be speaking more, a bit more about our platform for the local government elections and the composition of our list and the process through which we went um, we, we embarked on, uh, on to come up with the names on our list. The party will be contesting all 80 local authority areas. Local authority areas were increased to 80 compared to 70 in 2016. The order for the increase in constituencies was signed by Minister of Communities Ronald Vulcan and published in the official gazette on June 8. Nomination day will begin tomorrow from 10 hours through 14 hours, utilizing the approved forms. Individuals or groups will be required to submit their list of candidates to the returning officer in the various local authority areas. Parties, voluntary groups and individuals who have signaled an interest in contesting the election will submit a symbol for approval to the Gahan Elections Commission. Local government election is scheduled for November 12. A retired Chancellor of the Judiciary believes the probe into the sale of the lands at Pradoville too is unwarranted since it was approved by Cabinet. The former top judicial officer said he's not very pleased with the course of action taken by the government on this issue. Godfrey Brooms reports. Retired Chancellor of the Judiciary, Justice Cecil Kennard, is not happy with the investigation into the sale of lands at Goodverwachting, popularly known as Pradoville too. During an exclusive interview with News Update, Justice Kennard said that the investigation is unwarranted as Cabinet had given the approval of the sale of lands at the price it was sold for. He also noted that the lands were swamped. The retired judge claims that the government is fishing to prosecute persons. The one with it, Prado to I'm not too happy about charging people for that. He is also questioning the time the matters will take before they are finished. He claimed that if the PPP is victorious at the 2020 national election, the charges would be dropped as the party is convinced that the Special Organized Crime Unit, SOKU, is being used as a political bulldog to which hunt PPP members and perceived affiliates. Justice Kennard believes that the parties ought to come together and iron out the issue instead of utilizing the judiciary. There should be a talk between the sides concerned and see if they can resolve it without going to the court. Soku contends that the state lost millions of dollars due to the lands being sold at a significantly lower price than the market value. Those that purchased the lands in the area are former Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohi, former Education Minister Priya Manikchand, former Agriculture Minister Robert Persaud, Private Sector Executive Ramesh Duku, Director of Public Prosecutions Shalimar Ali Haq, former Chief of Staff of the Guyana Defence Force, and PNCR Executive Rear Admiral Gary Best, amongst others. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. 
The choice is clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Looking for fresh meals, tasty pastries and bread? Then visit Pam and Steve Bakery at 127 4th Street in Stone Avenue, Campbellville. Come and enjoy our daily breakfast and lunch specials. Choose from our wide variety of delightful meals. For the Christmas holidays, place your order for our black sponge and fruitcakes. Be sure to drop by for our Sunday breakfast special, pepper pot and more. Opens every day except holidays. So next time you're in town, remember to visit Pam and Steve Bakery or call us on 226-5338. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermite free and water-resistant. Enjoy one-year factory warranty along with our after-sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Keeping homes safe across the Caribbean for decades. BOP has become the most trusted name in insecticide. There has never been, or there never will be, any escape for insects from the unrelenting power of BOP. Formulated with precision, BOP effectively eliminates all flying and crawling insects that seek to invade your home. Trust BOP, the number one insecticide brand in the Caribbean, to keep everyone that matters to you safe. Distributed by Desinco Limited. Just arrived at HomeSense Wholesale and Retail Farm Public Road, a wide design of PVC ceiling panels at the most affordable prices. So be sure to drop by. You can also catch deals on party items, baby care items, household items, footwear for ladies, gents, and children, half a sacks, plastic chairs and tables, patio sets, carpets, fans, water dispensers, bicycles, trampolines, bouncy castles, and much more. HomeSense Wholesale and Retail 31 Track A Farm East Bang de Marara is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Telephone numbers 619-8502 or 638-6861. Less than 24 hours after Ghana signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Trinidad and Tobago for cooperation in the oil and gas industry and other sectors, President David Granger has announced a similar agreement with soon to be signed with Barbados. More in this report. President David Granger stressed that based on the mission of the Caribbean Single Market and Economy, CSME, for the long-term development of a single economic space with an enlarged market, working along with the CSME's aim is the way to go in order to build more resilient economies. We hope to conclude soon a framework agreement for economic cooperation with Barbados. We attended the ninth meeting of the Prime Ministerial Subcommittee of the Caribbean Single Market and Economy in Barbados earlier this month, September. President Granger further stressed, now as Guyana's energy sector takes root as a significant means to create development locally, there is also the need for strengthened relationships with other Caribbean counterparts to ensure their continued development as well. We see Guyana's future in the Caribbean, and we see the Caribbean's future in Guyana. Our economic interests are intertwined with those of the region. We shall continue to pursue regional economic cooperation in order to build greater prosperity and global competitiveness. The Memorandum of Understanding signed with Trinidad covers a number of areas of cooperation with heavy emphasis on oil and gas. The MOU had met with skepticism from some private sector entities and the opposition, with calls for the document to be made public. Following the sign-in, the document was released to the public. Reporting for MTV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. 
Finance Minister Winston Jordan has signed a loan agreement with the Islamic Development Bank for some $4.2 billion to benefit the Ghana Power and Light Company. The agreement was signed in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. The loan will support the power company's power utility upgrade program, which is a component of TPL's development and expansion program for 2014 to 2021. During his remarks, Minister Jordan said the loan incorporates necessary reforms and upgrades to reduce losses and improve the quality and reliability of electricity supply and will, at the same time help to transform Guyana's infrastructure landscape, boost our manufacturing sector and improve the quality of life of citizens. The loan will facilitate the rehabilitation of 153 kilometers of JPL's medium voltage and low voltage network and 6,941 smart meters, including the associated transformers, service lines, and distribution boxes. It will also provide for the rehabilitation and extension of two 69 13.8 kV substations at Kingston and Freeding Hoop, including equipment switchgear, power transformers, a rerouting of circuits, distribution feeders, and cable connections. The consultancy services for the preparation of designs and specifications for the substations and the sites, supervision for the works will also be covered by the loan. GPL is the executing agency for the project and will operate under the aegis of the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. Minister of Public Health, Valde Lawrence, has confirmed that the Sussex Street drug barn is not being used by the government any longer. Here's more from Godfrey Brooms. Minister Lawrence, during a telephone interview, noted that the government has stopped using Linden Holdings Company Limited to store pharmaceuticals. The company has since collected over $320 million in rent in 27 months. She stated that the CT scan machine that was housed at the location has been removed, thus there is no use for the facility. Minister Lawrence pointed out that the government's drug bond at Diamond is being expanded and also is the one in Kingston. However, the government is looking to ensure that the drugs are delivered to hospitals and health centers in a timely manner. The government had begun renting the facility in June 2016 to store medical drugs in Sussex Street. The rent for a month was $12.5 million. The then Minister of Public Health, Dr. George Norton, had defended the government's decision to rent the facility, claiming that the PPP government was paying $19 million per month to rent a facility from the new Ghana pharmaceutical company. However, that was determined to be untrue and the minister was forced to apologize to the National Assembly. A few months after, he was removed from that position and placed at the Ministry of Social Cohesion, a department of the Ministry of the Presidency. Valda Lawrence, who was the Minister of Social Protection, assumed the responsibility for the Public Health Ministry. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Even as it seeks to capitalize on Guyana's oil and gas industry, Trinidad and Tobago seems to have no intentions to allow Guyana's honey to reach its market. Recently, Trinidad fined a Guyanese shipping company, Le Parkin, $3,000 for facilitating the movement of honey within one mile of that country's shores. One of the areas we've been very defensive has been honey because of the strength of our sector and the, and the um, damage that the importation of diseases will do to us. In light of that, Minister Rambarat, when asked why Trinidad and Tobago had never attempted to amend its laws on the movement of honey in the Caribbean, while not giving any formidable commitment, Rambarat said Trinidad may examine the possibility of slackening up in the country, being used as an in-transit port. Well, the, law, the law is specific in terms of um, in-transit and honey landing in Trinidad and, and remaining in Trinidad. Um, we've committed to, to have another look at the law to see if um, we could create that environment in which we could allow in transit um, once it doesn't stay in the, in the country and it's something we have to look at. The Georgetown Chamber of Commerce as of recent has spoken against the Trinidad and Tobago's use of antiquated laws to hinder trade relations with Guyana, especially as regard transshipment issues. It was earlier in 2015 using its 1935 regulations 
a shipment of honey from Guyana destined for the Leeward Island while in transit in Trinidad and Tobago was seized and left to spoil. According to the country's laws, honey produced outside of Trinidad and Tobago should not be within 100 meters of its shores. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Guyana has received a $184 million grant from the Islamic Development Bank to support the rice sector. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan signed the so-called reverse linkage project in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. The project will assist in updating Guyana's expertise in technology in rice production, as well as introduce innovative rice varieties in Guyana. Guyana exported $200 million U.S. million worth of rice in 2017. 22 years after he fought against his country writing off Guyana's death, Trinidad's Prime Minister Keith Rowley is reminding Guyanese that his Twin Island Republic was very generous to Guyana. Trinidad's oil industry has virtually collapsed and Rowley is seeking to forge ties with Guyana to tap into the burgeoning petroleum industry. Here is more. Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Keith Rowley, reminded reporters yesterday that his country would have written off millions in death owed to them by Guyana back in 1996. In June 1996, the Trinidadian government, under the leadership of Bas Diopande, wrote off 357 million US dollars. The write-off had been recommended by the central bank, which holds 75% of the death, with the remainder 25% owing to the government. That write-off was done against the background of Trinidad and Tobago being encouraged to, and as a matter of fact, we did so against international pressures. And we are not holding that as any quid pro quo. We're treating that as circumstantial, and we maintain our position that we are friendly cooperating neighbor of Guyana. Rowley at that time in the opposition's People's National Movement took the government to task for agreeing to allow a substantial part of the death to go unpaid. According to a report on the Interpress Service News Agency website dated June 11, 1966, Rowley was quoted as saying, Guyana has picked the pockets of Trinidad and Tobago. Rowley, who went against the decision, said he had preferred the deaths being repaid through assets such as forestry land, rice and gold mining interest. At that time, Trinidad was one of the richest countries in the carbon, thanks to its thriving oil industry. But fast forward 22 years to 2018, Rowley on Wednesday travelled to Guyana to sign a memorandum of agreement of energy cooperation with the Guyana government. This agreement came exactly at a time when the once oil-rich nation was forced to close its state-run oil refinery Petrotrin and fire its employees. Still to come after the break, Lenin Man crushed to death by log. Stay tuned. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. You minding me business? I noticed you yesterday. You're there watching, 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 watching. Today you're there here again. Why are you minding me business? I fed up your nosy self. Yeah, baby, I just love your windows. Why are you bad eyeing me window? Like your house single window? What kind of window really in your house? I got some all overs windows that I need to change. Louvers! <laughs> Girl, I let you in for a secret, right? Peace and got a special deal right now. You go along there, you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. 
Oh, for the love of God, try with them louvers, window, and go down to Beeson and modernize. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. The biggest single show in Guyana is here. Royalty Vibes Entertainment presents Pay My Ride. Guyana Edition. On 22nd of September, Lenora Stadium, West Coast Demerara. No fee to participate in show. Over 30 categories. Cake open, 6 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. Ticket $500, fee could pass $1,000. Pay more at the gate. Tickets and registration from available at Ali's and Sun. Kiflan Mall. And New Amsterdam. Fisher Toy Store. Cheryl Street, Georgetown. Trans Pacific. East Coast Demerara. DJ Electronic, Essie Crib. Internet World Cafe. The Wheel West Coast Demerara. Registration form must be submitted before 3 p.m. 20th. September for info contact 601 9151. This event is powered by. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Police in Linden are probing the death of a 20-year-old man who was reportedly pinned by a log while working at the R.I. Forest Products Sawmill in Lumberyard at 26 Blueberry Hill, Wismar. The dead man has been identified as Stephen Brathwaite called Grinch, a laborer of Lot 100, Block 22, squatting area, Wismar. Police say about 8.30 hours today, Brathwaite was drawing fuel from a truck when one of the logs on the said truck slipped and pinned him to the ground across his abdomen and thighs, causing his intestine to protrude. Upon hearing the noise of the log sliding off and a short scream from Brathwaite, several employees of the said company rushed to his assistance. Police say they managed to remove the log off from the young man and rushed him to the Linen Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The body is at the Wismar Hospital, more three awaiting a postmortem. Police questioned several of the employees at the sawmill as they continued with investigations. Opposition leader Bar Jagdil has signaled his readiness to give a detailed interview to the Special Organized Crime Unit once President David Granger leads the way and answers questions from Soku about the Demore Harbor Bridge scandal. Details in this report. During a news conference today, Opposition Leader Bar Jaglio told reporters that he's ready to speak with the Special Organized Crime Unit. But he will do so when President David Granger leads the path in accepting to be interviewed by the Special Organized Crime Unit on a new Demerar Harbor Bridge scandal. The Opposition People's Progressive Party had approached the Special Organized Crime Unit for possible criminal charges against Minister David Patterson for procurement breaches. The party claimed there were procurement breaches for the selection and award of the contract for the consultancy of the feasibility study and designs for the new Demerara River Bridge. Jack Dio voluntarily went into Soku last week after a number of former ministers under his administration were hauled in for questioning. The former president, however, invoked his presidential immunity and refused to answer any questions. If the president chooses in Soku when he's questioned in Soku, chooses to give answers to why he presided over cabinet and approved a contract that was contrary to the law. I'll go back to Soku and I will not use that provision. I will not use that constitutional provision and you have that from me. All the officials who were accompanied with their attorneys chose to remain silent until the matter reaches the court. The lands at Pradoville too were purchased by former president and the former government ministers back in 2010. In the Pradoville II scandal, the lands were said to be grossly undervalued and sold substantially lower than the market value for the land, thereby depriving the state of its full benefits. 
Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu has closed the door to a full-fledged investigation into the allegations of mismanagement of resources and the appointments of political personnel at the Department of Public Information. Here's more. Good morning, Mr. Prime Minister. Um, are you concerned that another set of allegations have been leveled against another state news agency, this time the Department of Public Information, about um, alleged mismanagement and the employment of political personnel? The GPI is handling that. GPI is handling Yes. Wouldn't you um, recommend an investigation, a full-fledged investigation? No, no, no. The DPI is handling that. And um, how is it, sir, that a... The DPI is handling that. A letter by some employees of the Department of Public Information, DPI, was a few days ago published in one of the local dailies, claiming that the editor-in-chief of the department is being paid hefty but her workload is small. The letter also claims that money is being wasted for staff retreats. The director of the agency, Imran Khan, had responded rebuffing all of the allegations, claiming that it was a quote-unquote copycat complaint letter. He noted that the DPI has not sought any supplementary sums to execute its operations and is being managed within budget and with strict adherence to all procurement regulations and guidelines. A few days prior, the general manager of the Guyana Chronicle was also featured for massive spending. It is alleged that he spent millions of dollars enhancing his office, hosting a prayer service, boosting the Chronicle's Facebook page, traveling overseas, amongst others. Duncan had also issued a dismissal letter to the finance controller, but that was revoked following a meeting with the Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu. Duncan, as well as the finance controller, has since been sent on administrative leave pending the investigation into the allegations of excessive spending. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The inaugural Guyana Trade and Investment Exhibition, Gaitai, aired at enhancing the country's trade relations locally, regional and internationally, opened this morning at the Marriott Hotel in Georgetown. The three-day event is expected to become the country's premier trade fair. As both public and private and potential investors were all present at the inaugural ceremony for the Guyana Trade and Investment Exhibition, Gai Tai. Some 56 exhibitors are showcasing and sharing information on their products and services. While relating the significance behind the development and the marketing of Gai Tai, as it relates to it being recognized both regionally and internationally as the premier trade fair destination, Business Minister Dominic Gaskin during his brief address said that Gai Tai is one which is business oriented. Gai Tai is not about numbers and ticket sales. It is not and was never intended to be a mega event. It is not and was never intended to be a consumer event. And it is not and was never intended to be an entertainment event last night's cocktail notwithstanding. It is strictly a business-to-business -business event, and it is expected to contribute to two of the four key objectives of the Ministry of Business's strategic five-year plan. These are to increase value-added production and exports, and to increase sustainable private sector investment. Guy Tai, Minister Gaskin also indicated, aligns with one of the ministry's major projects, that being the National Quality Infrastructure Project. The project is designed to improve the country's ability to test and certify its exports and to develop a national export and investment strategy. In addition to that, Minister Gaskin assured that Guy Tai will give participants the opportunity to showcase their businesses. It is therefore our expectation that Gaitai will contribute measurably to increased export earnings in the long term and that participating businesses will benefit in the short term by interacting with international buyers and through opportunities for knowledge sharing. Speaking at the opening ceremony, President David Granger indicated that the Guy Thai is an event which is well appreciated and envisioned by the government as a means to enhance the country's investor image on a global spectrum. There is need, however, for intensified collaboration 
between local, regional, and international firms to grasp opportunities which can provide a platform for global market penetration. We see the Guyana Trade and Investment Exhibition as a welcome development as a platform for local businesses to engage and network with Caribbean and international investors. Gaitai could enhance Guyana's investment image as an investor-friendly state. It can improve competitiveness of large, small, and medium-sized enterprises and strategically position Guyana and the Caribbean in the global marketplace. Agencies such as the Caribbean Development Bank, IDB, the U.S. Embassy, the Canadian Embassy, and several Latin American countries have on hand at the event experts to present vital information on access to international markets. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lishona Gomes, Cornelius. Drivers plying the Lin Nin to Kokwani route has reduced bus fares from 3,000 to 2,500 following significant upgrades to the Lin Nin Aichuni Kokwani road, according to the Department of Public Information. In 2017, the drivers had increased the fare by $500, citing added expenses to the condition of the road. However, following the repairs, the drivers reported that they were making fewer trips to the repair shops and their vehicles are consuming less gas, hence the fare reduction. Regional Vice Chairman El Roy Adolf expressed satisfaction with the price reduction. He also lauded the Ministry of Natural Resources for addressing the issue and allocating substantial funds needed to execute major repairs on the road. Our guide is being provided with adequate information on Guyana's emerging oil and gas industry. Well, Rajesh Lakan today sought to get the answer to this question from persons in the streets. Guyana is set to commercially produce oil in 2020. But how much do you know about this upcoming oil and gas industry? Here is what the people say. The administration needs to let people know how they intend to use the revenue that would be garnered. Um, that I think there's much more that, for, at least for me, I, I, I don't think that enough is being said there, out there because people can be having unrealistic expectations and then when that doesn't materialize, there's another side to that. Um, so be open, be it the government, be it Exxon, the other part of it is that there are those who are saying things and they can't justify what they are saying. So there is need for information out there and put it in simple terms so that the average man in the street can understand what is taking place. Technically, it's, it's good in a sense, but because of the fact that this is a new, totally new venture for Guyanese on the whole. A lot of Guyanese will find themselves left behind if they don't begin to educate themselves in terms of what it needs to take to do oil and gas. And we can take an example from some of the countries like Kenya and Nigeria and all those places who weren't even ready. That it's not a case of whereby you will just, we got oil and gas and we can get a job. No, oil and gas is totally different than cutting cane or, or farming. It leaves more technical knowledge, more education. So unless the average Guyanese begin to think in that direction, a lot of us is going to get left behind with the oil and gas. Is it now being done to educate Guyanese on this sector? Well, I won't be able to comment on that. But I think with us having the knowledge and the, and the thing that you see everybody walk around with a, a smartphone, there's a word called Google. And you can get a lot of information. You can even educate yourself on the sense by just reading which is one of our challenges in this country with the youths and in the average person. Reading and information that's readily available on the internet. I don't know much. Do you think more public awareness should be done? I, I, I really believe so. I think they need to do a better job. And I think probably if I take the, 
impetus and the initiative to, the information is out there, but I haven't taken advantage of it, I guess. Right now they're coming to come. Everything can put in place one time, but um, they will work around. I mean, it's a new experience and, you know, they will get here. So how much do you know about this upcoming sector? Well, I know nothing about it, honestly. I know nothing about it. Why you don't know nothing about it? Is, is it because... It's a new something. Uh -huh. And we Guyanese never have the experience about it. It's a new something. So, you know, we got to learn. I mean, you got to get the teaching and, you know. You said teaching. Do you think enough is done to sensitize Guyanese on this sector? No, enough is not done. Okay. What would you like to see be done to address this issue? Well, um, the government and the people got to keep more workshop and yeah, they fight the people and, you know, that is the only way. Well, hopefully the authorities, I, you know, I'm not going to say yes or no, but I think whatever bit they're doing, I think we should capitalize. But again, it's like going to school. You could, it could only depend on how much the teacher teaches you in the class. You have to work on your own to, to get to that level. You can't get too much information. It's got to be. And put it in simple language so that the average man in the street can understand. Because I think they are in, uh, the average man in the street or uh, is in the majority. An educated you know, uh, population or, or a citizen is, is actually easier to please, I guess, or easier to, to um, convince, I guess, uh, on their agenda and how it's going to impact us. So I think it's important for them to, to do more public awareness. Absolutely, yeah. For MTV News Updates, I'm Rajesh Lakan. Here is Chelsea Griffith with today's Court Roundup. A 53-year-old Craig Street Campbellville resident was today remanded to prison by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan for trafficking narcotics after being busted with cocaine stashed inside of his freezer. Andrew Jordan was accused of trafficking 100 grams of cocaine on Monday, September 17, 2018, at his Lot 15 Craig Street Campbellville home. He denied the charge. Jordan was represented by attorney at law Stanley Moore. Custom Anti Narcotics Unit Canu Prosecutor Kunio Sandiford opposed to Jordan being released on bail, citing the seriousness of the charge and that the accused gave an oral caution statement admitting to the offense. According to the facts, Canu ranks acting on a tip off, went to Jordan's home and conducted a search in his presence. The illicit drug was found in a container stashed inside of his refrigerator. Under caution, Jordan admitted to ownership of the drugs and told the officers that he took a chance. The chief magistrate ruled in favor of the prosecution's objection and remanded Jordan to prison until October 8. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Court Roundup. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sports Update and more. Stay with us. The secret is out. Tyo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know, know the, the secret. secret. 
<laughs> you can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fix for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. The biggest single show in Guyana is here. Reality Vibes Entertainment presents me. My right. Guyana Edition. On 22nd of September, Lenora Stadium, West Coast Demerara. No fee to participate in show. All the tourist categories. Cake open, 6 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. Ticket $500, fee could pass $1,000. Pay more at the gate. Tickets and registration form available at Ali's and Sun. Kiflan Mall and New Amsterdam. Fisher Toy Store. Sherry Street, Georgetown. Trans Pacific, East Coast Demerara. DJ Electronic, Essicrim. Internet World Cafe. New Zealand, West Coast Demerara. Registration form must be submitted before 3 p.m. 20th. September for info contact 601 9151. This event is powered by Gafools proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafools setting a new benchmark. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. A match that promised much for the West Indies women following a tidy performance in the field led by DeAndre Dutton ended in a no result when Rain forced an early end to the second ICC Women's won the International of the Scandals International Home Series against South Africa women yesterday in Barbados. Dotton grabbed a 3 for 29 from her allotted 6 overs to be picked up the home team's bowlers as the South Africans were restricted to 177 for 8 from their rain reducer located of 38 overs. But overnight, an early morning rain had caused a 2 hour delay to the start of the play, seeing the match reduced to 43 overs aside before it was further reduced after another hour was lost with 10 overs of the visitors' innings. The Caribbean side never got a chance to bat as another shower soon after the innings break started for some pious Jonathan Blades and Leslie Reffer Jr. to bring an early close. The result left the West Indies women still tailing 0 for 1 in a 3 match series following a 40 run defeat in the first ODI three days early at the same venue where the series concludes on Saturday. The outcome also means that two teams remain locked in a tense battle in the bottom half of the championship table on 7 points and sets up an intriguing finale in 3 days time. The University of Ghana's Trogans took off this morning for Suriname, where they'll be competing in the second annual Cyril Bonner Memorial T20 Cricket Competition at the weekend. 
The University of Guyana's cricket team, the Trojans, departed this morning headed for Paramaribo, Suriname, to participate in the second Cyril Bonar Memorial T20 cricket competition to be held at the Dr. Snell Park this weekend on September 22 and September 23. Homebred Tremaine Smart, part of the current West Indies Women's T20 World Championship team, is expected to be there. Smart, a right-arm medium bowler, has an impressive economy rate of 5.51 and best bowling figures of 3 for 9 at the T20 level. She also holds the record for the highest third-wicket partnership in a women's 2020 international with 124 runs. Speaking to this newscast was coach of the Trojans, Kenroy Joseph, who relayed since he was appointed coach, the team has been winning and doing really well. He added that his squad consists of very young players, most of whom are students of the university and others who work. Coach Joseph went on to say that preparations have been held back due to the weather, but much has been done to push in the extra work. Thus far, our preparation for this tournament has been a little damper because of the weather. But also, um, we try the best to put in a lot of gym work and also our feel in terms of our feeling because that will be critical for success in the tournament this weekend. The tournament will consist of many teams, especially defending champions, the Spartans, which consists of national Guyanese and Surinamese players, with one such player being Guyanese all-rounder Kelon Carmichael, who enjoyed three successful seasons in England playing county cricket. The matches are scheduled to be played on September 22 from 9 hours 30 and September 23 also from 9 hours 30. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sport Update. Still in cricket, Australia will play hard but fair against Pakistan, says Captain Tim Payne, as the side prepares for its first series since the ball tampering scandal. Steve Smith, David Warren and Cameron Bencroft were serving bans for the incident, which happened during a test against South Africa in March. Cricket Australia is also investigating an accusation by England's Moeen Ali. Moeen claims he was called a summer by an Australian play in the 2015 Ashes. Australia have five on cup players for the two test series in the United Arab Emirates, which starts on October 7. The Ghana Rugby Football Union on Tuesday during a press conference refused to provide the media with an answer to a question that was directed to them regarding the blacklisting of players. Here is more. During a press conference with the Guyana Rugby Football Union on Tuesday, this newscast directed a question to the manager of the Green Machine, Peter Campaign, regarding the use of two different airlines for the squad to reach to Barbados. The team will be participating in the 2018 RAN 7th Championship this weekend. Campaign stated that both teams were to depart yesterday at 5 hours 35 with Caribbean Airlines, but he would leave ahead of them along with the physiotherapist Lucretia Abiola Blair using Liat Airways. Campaign noted that the team was unable to travel with Liat because of financial constraints. But when asked whether the matter had anything to do with players being blacklisted, the manager said he has no knowledge of that. I don't know about that. I just came to the union. As such, the question was then directed to other members of the union that were present, but silence prevailed. News Update understands that several players that are in Barbados currently have been blacklisted from Liat due to some financial obligations the GRFU failed to rectify. The situation has been this way for several years. In 2016, when the 15th team traveled to Barbados to partake in a tournament, some players were prevented from returning home. The GRFU had to detain a lawyer who ensured the players returned to Guyana after several days of being detained in the country. The debt owed to Liat has not been cleared. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sports Update. The Ghana Football Federation's head coach and technical director of the National Senior Men's National Team are sent to attend the upcoming FIFA conference in London this weekend. Head coach of the Senior Men's National Team, Michael Johnson, and technical director of the Guyana Football Federation, Ian Greenwood, will be among head coaches and technical directors of the FIFA member associations and technical experts of all six confederations participating in a FIFA conference aimed towards reviewing the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia. The conference, scheduled for September 23 in London, England, aims to analyze the FIFA World Cup from a technical and tactical point of view to identify trends and compare the main five findings to previous editions of the FIFA World Cup based on the report by FIFA's technical study group and assess the impact of video assistant referees on the game. 
The GFF staff will be engaging FIFA's technical experts to garner the information from the conference so as to share with coaches locally and regionally. Special attention will be paid to goals scored, where they came from and the role of key players throughout the tournament. Aside from the conference, specific meetings are planned with national team head coaches and technical directors of the member associations. The purpose of these meetings is to go deeper into the analysis of teams from the different confederations and to discuss the influence that this World Cup might have on the development of football in the various regions. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sports Update. And finally in sport, a decision to lift the suspension of the Russia's anti-doping agency has been labelled the greatest treasury against clean athletes. The World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, has ended a three-year suspension which followed a major scandal over alleged slave-sponsored doping. Leading athletes and anti-doping bodies had opposed the move. WADA President Sir Craig Reddy said the reinstatement was subject to strict conditions. Nine members of the 12-strong executive committee voted in favour of the recommendation at a meeting in the St. Chalice with two against and one absentism. However, a lawyer for the Russian whistleblower Gregory Vodelfov called it the greatest treasury against clean athletes in Libyan history. Stay with us, more news after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. In the region, Colombian cocaine production hit record levels in 2017, according to the newly released UN statistics. The UN Office on Drugs and Crime says production rose about 31% year-on-year to some 1,400 tons cultivated on 171,000 hectares. The agency warned production could harm recent peace-building efforts. Colombia is the world's largest producer of cocaine, and much of it ends up in the U.S., which is the world's largest consumer. Gloria Marie Bordeto Rosido, Colombia's Justice Minister, reported the call the data very, very worrying. And internationally, at least 40 people have died after a ferry carrying hundreds of people capsized on Lake Victoria, Tanzania. One official told the Reuters news agency the number has drowned could be more than 200. Rescue efforts have been halted until dawn on Friday. The MV Nerareri ferry overturned here on the shore between the islands of Yokora and Bangalore. It is true the overloaded vessel toppled over with crowds on board to one side as it dock. Officials have said that the ferry was carrying more than 400 passengers. About 100 people were rescued while 32 are said to be in a critical condition. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 791. Let's turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and Barbies River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Tomorrow, Friday's Nominations Day for Local Government Elections 2018. Former Chancellor of the Judiciary says charges against former government officials for Prattville 2 are unwarranted. Lenin Man crushed to death by Lug. And in sport, the rainforest abandonment of the second ODI between West Indies and South Africa women. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Sandy Ramutar. Thanking you for watching. Have a good night.